Hi, Steven here from Core Electronics. Today I want to show you how to use the light sensor on the Adafruit Circuit Playground Express to make a color matching light wheel and we'll use Circuit Python in order to program it. The Circuit Playground Express has an analog light sensor cooked right into the board in the top left and that returns an analog signal of just 0 to 64,000 and you might wonder how we're going to take just a 0, zero to 64,000 number and turn that into a color. Well, in order to do it, you've got to understand how colors work. So when we look at a green object, that object is absorbing every color in the visual spectrum except green and whatever other parts of colors that make it its exact color. But when I look at this green owl, I'm seeing the green light reflected off of it. Likewise, when you see blue, that object's reflecting more of the blue wavelength than any other wavelength. So on the NeoPixel board, or the NeoPixels on the Circuit Playground Express, there's a NeoPixel right next to the light sensor, so we can have it turn on red and take a reading from the from the light sensor while the LED is lit up red and if we have a red object over it then it will reflect more red light than any other light. So I'll give a quick demonstration. When we do a sense it turns the light on red, green, and blue really quickly and takes a quick reading while each color is on in order to sense the object above it. So if we if we put a blue object above it, then more blue light is reflected off the object to the light sensor and we're able to create an RGB value from that. If we put a red object over it, then more red light will be reflected than anything else. And likewise for any other color. So our encode will be a sense from the button B press and the left button will clear left button will clear any lights that we have on currently. Now this isn't a perfect system for reading color. As you can see, my, the first try on this yellow object came up green and there it's red, but considering we're just using a light sensor and an LED, it's, it's, it works pretty, good, pretty darn good. So let me show you how we made it. So if we open up the code in in Mu, I'll break down the different parts. First of all, we need to import all our libraries in order for this to work. We use switches on the board. We're using analog inputs, so we need our analog in and out libraries, and we're going to remap some of our values from the analog sensor to a 0 to 255 sensor later on, so we'll use a simple in and out map range library as well. We'll start by initializing our NeoPixels so we'll be able to use them. And this is an important step right here. We have our analog in board light. So that's that's creating our analog input from the light sensor and storing it as a variable analog in that we'll use throughout the sketch. In the main body of our sketch we have an if statement that contains the main body of our code. So that's if circuit playground express button B. So if the bu if button B is pressed, then we'll run our check for color sensing. Um, first of all, we'll turn all our LEDs off because um, if there's lights on when we do the check, those other lights would stay on and it would it would throw off our readings if we had all green lights and we were trying to read something that it needs to be very very small amounts of differences can throw off your results completely so which is why often you'll need to try once or twice before it matches the color properly and then at this part of the code we turn each light on in turn and then read the analog input from the light sensor while that light's on, then we have a short pause and we turn them off. And we we really want the pause there just so there's time for the NeoPixels to react. 
because they don't they, they don't light up full brightness instantly. There is a slight delay. Uh, the next part of our sketch, we determine our highest and lowest light reading. So, whatever reading that we take while we're while we're checking each color, the highest one will become the maximum part of our range, and the lowest one will be the lowest part of the range that we'll convert from. And we right here we remap from the from the values that we read from the raw sensor, the raw data. We'll jump ahead and look at our serial monitor, monitor down here. Maximum light received from the analog sensor was 14,272, and the minimum light, the lowest reading, was 1,488. So our range of light is from 1,488 to 14,000. And we need to convert that to between, be a value of between 0 and 255, which is a value that the NeoPixels recognize. Now, the obvious problem with making the minimum and maximum of our range uh, the highest and lowest reading is that our lowest reading will be returned as a 0 in the new range, and our highest reading will be turn, returned as 255. So that obviously takes out a lot of accuracy within our reading. However, NeoPixels won't be able to take an exact reading from our color sensor, and you won't be able to take an exact RGB reading and plug it straight into NeoPixels and have that appear to be the same color on the lights. In order to change our raw data from the light sensor into a 0 to 255 range, we'll use the map range command. And within the brackets, we have our data input, the minimum original range, the maximum original range, and then we have the new range that we need to map it into, and that's going to be between 0 and 255. Now, the problem with using the minimum recorded value and the maximum recorded value from each reading is that the minimum will become will be returned as 0, and the maximum will be returned as 255, and the third middle number is the only one that's going to have a changeable value. But when you try to turn a true RGB reading off the light sensor into NeoPixel lights, then it usually ends up being mostly white or completely washed out. And because our eyes don't see a color that a NeoPixel puts out exactly the same as it receives color signals. So in order to get colors from the Circuit Playground Express that are more like what we'd expect to see or that are closer to the color of the actual object, we'll we need to simplify it. So having 0 for one value, 255 for the other, and the variable third value is the best way to get colors to show up how you'd expect them to show up. And to simplify them further, we're going to check red, green, and blue. If any of them are under 30, then we're going to just change them to 0. And we do this because if we want to read something that's red, it's almost always going to have some other reading on, on the other colors involved. So if you have 255 on red, it'll have 10 to 20 on something else. And that'll make your color look to your eye completely different than red, even though it's remarkably close to being a perfect reading. So, But if we take the bottom 30 out, out and then it can, then it is able to default to just a true red, green, or blue when it's really close. Otherwise, we won't ever be able to get those colors. And you don't notice so much in any in-between colors if there's a little bit of variability there. And the last thing we do is we convert our red, green, and blue to in integer values because currently they're floats, so they have lots of decimal places in there but we can't have decimal places in our NeoPixel output. And we have a serial monitor print. So we print our maximum light, our minimum light, our raw RGB values that we've read, and then our calculated RGB values that we'll use for the NeoPixels. And then if 
our minimum and maximum red values are less than 6,000, less than or equal to 6,000, then we don't fill anything at all because if there's no object above it, we don't want to display a random color every time. We just want the pixels to stay off so then you know you can do another reading again. And if, they, if, it, is an, if it is a good reading, then it'll go ahead and show the color on all the NeoPixels and fill them in in this command and then output the colors that are red. So if we take a look at the serial monitor, we can see that was a bad reading. We can see that measuring the light off of this blue octopus, we have our maximum and minimum light, our raw values, and then our converted output, which is 0 red, 71 green, and 255 blue. And it ends up being pretty darn close. And we'll do it again for yellow. So we have a 172 on red, 255 on green, and 0 on blue. And it makes a pretty good match. So you can't do perfectly accurately any color using this method, but you can do most colors, and certainly enough that it's easily recognizable that you've matched the color. So if you're an educator, I think this is a really good project because it's it brings a level of interactivity to, to the world around you that you usually don't experience. So there's not like, there's not a lot of off the shelf products out there that would allow you to duplicate the colors of things that you see. And if you're making it as a wearable, it's a great option for a wearable because there's a lot of potential there with being able to match your environment, change the, the look of what whatever wearable you've created. That concludes my tutorial on how to use CircuitPython and the light sensor on the Adafruit Circuit Playground Express to make color matching light wheel. If this is a project that sounds like a lot of fun for you, but the programming is a little bit over your head, check out my other tutorials on how to do the same project using MakeCode. It's a great platform for educators and beginners, and you can get real satisfying results from it just like this in only a few minutes with no programming knowledge required. So, see you there.